This video is going to be a very basic introduction to quantum theory. Quantum theory pertains to the way in which energy is transferred between two objects. We're going to make, for this video, we're going to make and think about a light bulb as a source of energy. Now I want to remind you before we get into this video that when chemists use the word energy, we are also referring to light or electromagnetic radiation. So energy, light, and electromagnetic radiation all mean the same thing to a chemist. So let's say that we have this light bulb, you have this light bulb in your house and you plug it into a light fixture and turn it on and it emits kind of a nice yellowish, orangish, very warm hue, very nice warm color of light. The light that's being emitted from your light bulb the energy that's being emitted from this light bulb falls in this part of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. It's visible light, light that we're capable of seeing with our eyes. We can see that nice yellowish, orangish glow. And there's a few things that we know about the energy or the light that is being emitted from this light bulb. So let's go over these things that we know about the energy or light coming off of this bulb. First of all, we know that this light has a wavelength which we um, abbreviate lambda. And we know that this light has a frequency, which we abbreviate with the Greek letter nu. And I talked about wavelength and fre frequency in the previous video. We know that the wavelength times the frequency of this light is going to be equal to the speed of light, c, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So we know that the, the light or the energy that's coming out of this bulb is traveling at a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we know that its wavelength times its frequency is equal to that 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So it's a constant. We, um, and again, this is, this is something from the previous video as well. We know that the light coming off of this bulb is traveling on a wave-like path. So I'm going to, let's redraw one of these, make it a really nice wave. So we know that the, the energy that's coming out of this light bulb is traveling in a very nice wave-like path, um, and that's where we define our wavelength, and that's also where we define our frequency. Now, something that we haven't talked about yet is that this particular path, this wave-like path of energy coming out of this light bulb, is actually made up of particles, actual objects that are called photons. So these photons are particles that are traveling on the wave-like path. And they are actually the objects that carry the energy which we're going to abbreviate capital E. So these photons are traveling on this path, this particle traveling on this path, carrying the energy that is being transmitted out of this light bulb and into whatever object you have in your house. So these photons are particles of energy. The energy of these photons is calculated from the light's wavelength or from its frequency. So the energy is calculated by multiplying this constant h times the light's frequency or multiplying the constant h times the speed of light and dividing by the wavelength. So let's write some of this stuff down. E is the energy. H is just this constant that's used in quantum. It's called Planck's constant, and it is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34, and its units are joules seconds, joules times seconds. Joule is a unit of energy. And then as you know, the um, nu, which is our frequency, and lambda, which is our wavelength. In this particular equation, in order for this equation to work, 
nu has to be in units of one over second, and lambda has to be in units of meters. So uh, to sum that up, photons, particles that are carrying the energy as they travel from the object it, to a new object. Now, the, the last thing that we know about this light bulb or anything that emits energy is that it's only capable of emitting some types of photons. We're going to get really specific here. We're going to say atoms and molecules because this is chemistry, but we know um, objects in general can only emit and also absorb energy or light or EMR of specific photons. Some atoms or molecules may only emit one type of photon, but most substances emit several photons, quite a few photons. So this particular light bulb, maybe it has 10 types of photons that it's capable of emitting, and that's it. It can't emit any other type of photon. Um, so what does that mean? Practical terms, if you have a light bulb that's emitting 10 different types of visible photons, that light is not going to also maybe be emitting some infrared or some x-rays. If your light bulb is working in the visible region, you don't have to worry about it spitting out gamma rays. Another thing that it means to us as chemists is that the type of photon that's being emitted by a particular source of light, like a light bulb, is a unique characteristic of that particular material. So we see that an atom like copper has very specific photons that it's capable of emitting, whereas an atom of gold has totally different photons that it's capable of emitting. And if we can look at those photons, if we can actually observe those photons, that can help us characterize and identify the material that's giving off the particular types of light. So again, the basics of quantum, that light or energy is traveling on a wave-like path, it consists of photons, which are particles of energy, and the photon's energy can be calculated, calculated using either of these two equations. And all atoms and molecules are only capable of emitting some types of photons with some types of energy.